Eddie Hearn gives his opinion on AJ throwing the belts out of the ring in the middle of his meltdown. Let's see what he has to say. Drew Titan, Bronze on deck. Shout out to the mighty LDBC. Boxing scene. Link will be in the description. Hearn on Joshua tossing belts out of the ring. Let's see what he says. This is very interesting. Um, Eddie Hearn evidently believes that Anthony Joshua's bizarre post-fight actions were in part attributable to his frustrations with boxing sanctioning bodies. Wait one minute. Wait one minute. You got some nerve, my man. You got some nerve. The world was served to AJ on a silver platter, and all he had to do was beat these smaller guys. And he couldn't do that. You ducked the big guy, Deontay Wilder, and fought these smaller guys, and you lost. But let's let's continue to reign. Let's continue to reign. Shortly after it was announced that Ukraine's Alexander Usyk had defeated London's Joshua by split decision, which was ridiculous, to retain his WBO, WBA, and IBF titles in the heavyweight unification rematch Saturday night in Saudi Arabia, Joshua unexpectedly went on a bizarre reign. If y'all haven't seen it, go ahead. It's online. Everyone's talking about it. All right, this is the aftermath we're talking about now. It says, before the cringe-worthy sequence, and they have this in bold type underline, cringe-worthy sequence, a visibly angry Joshua dropped two of Usyk's belts, the Ring Magazine and the WBA, and left the ring in a huff. He would later come back and take control of the mic and make a series of strange declarations. Okay, here we go. AJ, they turning on you. They t here we go. It's happening. It's happening. Now you're going to see. Hearn, Joshua's longtime promoter, suggested the act reflected on, I'm sorry, the act reflected his cha his charges of exasperation with the sanctioning bodies and the whole system. And they have that in quotes. They represent which includes costly fees and mandatory challenges. Wait a minute. You know what? This is Eddie Hearn talking. I want to hear this from AJ. I want to hear if AJ feels this way. This is Eddie Hearn. This is his opinion. This is long-term promoter, y'all. But this is his opinion. Did AJ ever say this? He, I'm, 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 I'm mod, I'm mod at the, uh, the sanctioning phase and uh, 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 the mandatory challenge. Motherfucker, listen, man, you a boxer, my dude. You had three belts. Okay? You had three. All right, you had three mandatories at least. But the business was on your side so much that uh between you and eddie hearn and your ridiculous fan base no one cared what you did no one cared no one cared you could have a mandatory and you could just do something weird like jump out of the rankings or just choose to fight somebody else you was ranked in the wbc Got right in line to fight Deontay Wilder and jumped out the goddamn rankings. You did that, my man. You did that. This is ridiculous. This is cringeworthy. Matchroom. Y'all forgot King Kong Ortiz was signed to Matchroom. And right when he was in line to fight uh, uh, AJ, what happened? I got a better question. What do y'all think would have happened four years ago? Three or four years ago when they was when they could have fought. Ortiz is a big man, six foot five. 
boxer puncher, 240 pounds. The difference between him and Usyk is that he's stronger than Usyk. Y'all do the math, but whatever. Let me read on. He's held on to those belts for a long time, and those governing bodies have charged him a lot of money and put a lot of mandatories on him. He told IFL TV. And I think he's lost a lot of faith in the system. And I think he started to not be interested in fighting for the belts anymore. I think he just wants to fight uh, for enjoying for enjoyment and to challenge himself. Listen, man, Eddie Hearn's lying to y'all guys in this article. He's lying. Let me tell you what this is. About four or five days ago, he reached out to Shelly Finkel. Um, trying to secure a fight with Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder doesn't have a belt. Okay? This is what he's talking about. Um, well, Drew, what are you talking about? How does that make sense? Well, he's not interested in fighting for, fight, for, fighting for belts anymore, right? Which means, this is a translation, he knew he wasn't going to beat Alexander Usyk. He was trying to secure a payday with Deontay Wilder. You know, the guy you ducked for four years? Literally, ducked him for four years. You want to throw some King Kong with in there too? Yeah, go ahead. You know what comes with, with, with those titles. You paid Charles Martin $9 million so he can get the WBA. What are you talking about, man? You know the fees you got to pay. You know, you know all of this. With great power comes great responsibility. Man, you know this. What it is is that you have a lifetime contract with AJ and you need a return on your investment. You thought that this guy would generate long-term um, residual income for you. He is nothing but a product. You thought when he's long gone from the sport, replays of his fights and all this, that, and the third, you would, be, you know, uh, merchandising and stuff, you would have generational wealth generated from Anthony Joshua. But you knew he could not beat Usyk in the rematch, which is why you reached out to Shelly Finkel. Did you say, I'm wondering, because I'm reading this for the first time, I'm wondering anyway in this article is he going to mention how he emailed Shelly Finkel or Shirley Winkle, as he called him. I'm wondering, did you do that? Are you going to mention that in the article? Because I'm reading this for the first time. I'm not, he's, I don't think he's interested in fighting for belts anymore. Nah, he just had a fit and threw him over the damn top rope. This is ridiculous. Let me read further. He wants to challenge himself. Yeah, you want to fight Deontay now, right? You don't get no fight, you bum. Because it's not a challenge. It said, he says here, of course he wanted to be undisputed, but a lot of that was frustration. He left the ring because he knew I'm going to do something stupid. Yeah, and he forced himself, uh, I can't just leave. So he went back to the ring. I'm reading how it how it's written, by the way. He went back into the ring and gave a speech, which he was a little bit out of it. But it was just pure emotion. It was just from the heart. Why didn't you just go grab the mic from him, you dumbass? You know how much money he messed up with that meltdown? Had he had won, there was probably people looking to put their name, put a, put a name on a shirt and put it on him and pay him millions of dollars to promote the, their product. But win or lose, he still has an Under Armour deal, and now they saw that. You think they didn't get any, Do you think AJ or Hearn or somebody on that team didn't get an email asking, yo, we need assurance that this guy's okay? Because if he has another one of those, we can't have him doing that with a goddamn Under Armour uh, t shirt on or some sneakers on. He had an Anthony Josh, Joshua fitted cap during the uh, post fight on the side that said Under Armour. And he just had a goddamn meltdown. Can you imagine the owners of Under Armour seeing that? Like, oh my God. Who knows, man? Joshua offered uh, uh, he, he offered up an explanation for his remarks in the post fight press conference and on his social media. Her noted that the plan. It's still, here we go. It's still to have AJ get into the ring once more before the end of the year, possibly. He's going to be involved in some massive fights, but let's get active now, Hearn said. Let's get back in December. Now, here's the danger. And I want, and that's the article. Link will be in the description. Now, here's the danger. And this is what I'm talking about. He signed a lifelong deal with Eddie Hearn. 
Eddie Hearn just smoke screen y'all in this article, y'all. Listen carefully. He said he thinks that he's aggravated with the sanctioning fees and everything else. But as but you know, he went in undisputed. That was just one more belt and one more sanctioning fee. The WBC, you know they're gonna hit you up for sanctioning fees. What it is, 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 are you mad that he's paying sanctioning fees or is, the, or is the sanctioning fees costing them hundreds of thousands of dollars while you are not paying sanctioning fees? I'm wondering, who has more uh, money, Eddie Hearn or AJ? Because the way it's supposed to be, the fighter's supposed to be the one making all the bread. And after the fighter done paid off the team and everything else, then his promoter gets the goddamn cut. Things are backwards nowadays, y'all. Things are backwards. Now I know there's gonna be some big brains in the chat saying, "True, no, you're wrong. It's not goals. The promoter gets first. I don't care. This has become a shit show. Now Eddie Hearn is smoke screaming you. He's smoke screaming you. Smoke screen. AJ, this is the first time you're hearing about AJ being mad about sanctioning fees. He just made this shit up. And now he wants to throw AJ in the ring in December. We're in August. We're almost in September now. You want to put this guy back in the ring against who? And you reached out to Deontay Wilder? As if he won't knock his fucking head off? No, man. You're trying to get a return on your investment. You don't give a fuck about no AJ. He's not who you thought he was. Matter of fact, you knew who he was. Which is why you kept him away from Ortiz. You kept him away from AJ. You didn't anticipate Ruiz beating him. You didn't anticipate Usyk beating him. You put this kid on the pedestal and time revealed truth on him. The universe is undefeated. Things are happening. Boxing is fixing itself. Worldwide. Eddie Hearn once again just lied to y'all. This is the first time. If y'all can find a link or anything where AJ's down on sanctioning fees, let me know. I never heard it. Please let me know. And still in all, if he has said it, I don't care. He's trying to get this man in this mental state in the ring in December and tried to reach out to Deontay Wilder. By the way, he didn't mention that in the goddamn article, did he? But he said it on Twitter. He damn sure did. Man, you looking bad in these streets, AJ. You looking bad. Bronx on deck. Move!